So this video won't be as highly edited or scripted as my usual stuff, and just be me talking about a few things I keep in mind while I make my videos, and then some general tips and tricks about video making from questions I've been asked over the years. That way, when someone asks me advice on making a YouTube channel, I can just send them this video instead of typing out my usual response. So that being said, this video will be in two parts. First part is things I keep in mind when I make my videos, and the second part will be just general advice. So the first point, and this is probably one of the biggest things I do, and is one of my things of trying to make my videos as binge watchable as possible, is I assume each video is the first video people have seen of mine on the channel. So to this end, I do not include inside jokes or reference other videos without explaining them. But this also means I'll explain the same things over and over in different videos. So if you are binge watching the videos, you'll probably see me repeat myself a lot. Next up, point number two, I have like 12 of these written down. I make my intros as short and to the point as possible. I also put the most amount of effort visually into my intros, as I'm just basically giving an overview of what the video will be about, like the intro paragraph to an essay you'd write in school. Mainly because for internet videos, there's certain expectations that people have. People will generally click off if they're not already a fan of your video, if you don't get to the point quick enough. So those first 30 seconds of your video are generally the most important part. That's what gets people to actually watch the whole thing. And YouTube likes it when your video has high retention. And most of my videos do. So I guess that's been working out just fine for me. Because high retention views means YouTube will suggest your videos more often. And part of the reason they have the watch time retention thing is to kind of like counter clickbait channels where they just have a really clickbaity intro and then no, really clickbaity thumbnail, and then when you click on the video, it has nothing to do with it, and you click off. Uh, because of the retention thing, YouTube does have a way to punish those kinds of videos so they don't get as many views. But if you're able to get someone to click on the video and then watch the whole thing uh, consistently, YouTube rewards that by recommending your videos more often. And number three, outros are short and just wrap things up or give info that I forgot or couldn't place in the original video. Mainly like giving out honorable mentions. Like if I'm making a top 10 list and I know someone's gonna ask about a certain topic, like why didn't you include Arthas in insert X video here? I could just say, and these are ones I didn't include in the video because that'll usually be enough to satisfy them. Also, my end screen is like 11 seconds long End screens aren't super important, and there's actually a lot that goes into them. And mine aren't very good, and I wouldn't use them as a good example of how to do a good end screen. Generally, if you have an end screen, you kind of want to like show an actual clip from a video that's being suggested, or you know, keep talking over it, otherwise people are just going to click away. Which is basically what mine are like. Point number four, I try to keep in mind what I like in videos that I binge watch, or what would keep people watching the videos in a playlist without having to skip anything but ads. I found that the best things are just to keep intros short and outros just as short. Point number five, I don't remind people to like or subscribe at the end of the video. Although, I should. It is proven to work. I also don't think I'm better than everyone else for not doing it. I just didn't do it at the beginning of my channel, and I think it would be too late to start now. Because I still kind of don't like doing it. Point number six. When writing, I try not to force jokes. And instead, only add one if it's appropriate to the situation, and I think I can pull it off in the voiceover. I also try to include zero puns or sarcastic jokes, mainly because both are some of the laziest forms of comedy you can do, and very rarely have I seen either of those pulled off well, outside of being used very sparingly. So many videos, and pretty much every channel I've seen that was super heavy on puns, 
eventually phase them out. <laughs> and I was like, good, uh, because, you know, I liked your videos. It's just I hated the incessant, the um, large amount of puns that you use, and I'm glad you finally toned it down. I don't mind them every now and then, but, you know, every two sentences is just too much. And I only say this because as part of what I do, I do a lot of market research, so I watch a ton of YouTube videos, especially ones within my genre. And I've just seen so, so many new YouTubers. I follow tons of new people, like, uh, I have it set on my calendar for once a week to basically look for new YouTubers, and then I follow them. And a lot of them fall into a lot of these mistakes, and whenever they try to be funny, it's usually going straight to puns or sarcastic humor. Let's see, point seven. I also try to leave out numbers or math if I can. Like, X ability was changed in patch 5.2.3 to do 1529 more damage, up from 1369 damage at max level with X amounts of mastery. You know, tons of numbers. That kind of stuff isn't important. You could accomplish the same thing by saying X ability was changed in a later patch in Mist of Pandaria to do like 15% more damage, if even that. And this point is mainly here because I remember an interview with Stephen Hawking where he said his publisher or editor told him that he would sell half as many copies of his new book for every mathematical formula he put in it. And I was like, oh, you know, that makes sense. I don't really want to see a whole bunch of math formulas when reading a book. I would usually just skip over them. It's like, yeah, I get it. And so I kind of try to do that with videos too. Point eight, when presenting information, I try to give it in a way that a good teacher trying to engage with their students would, and not like a boring professor who just reads from a book. Which is mainly why I use a fake voice in videos and not my real voice. Very few people have a good natural sounding voice. The best voice you can use in a video is one that sounds like a natural voice, but is actually still, you know, a fake one with more energy in it. People are just used to hearing higher energy voices in videos, which is generally not how real people talk. And when presenting information, try to tell it in a way that's entertaining and not like you're just reading facts from Wikipedia. Point nine. If I'm talking about a case that affected a lot of people, I'll usually just use everyone words. Like, no one played Warrior as DPS in Vanilla WoW, or everyone took X talent in PvP. This is just to get to the point and not waste everybody's time with saying, well, there were some DPS warriors in Vanilla WoW, and in fact, they didn't do half bad and were actually quite common. But, if you were a warrior in Vanilla WoW, you were expected to tank, and all your set bonuses were to that end. It's easier just to let people complain about the everyone words in the comments than it is to mess with the flow of the video to go on tangents about technicalities. Point 10. This one's specifically for lore. If I'm talking about lore, I'll try to rewrite it and retell it in my own words as if I'm explaining it to a friend who doesn't know anything but minor amounts of WoW lore. So to this end, I'll read everything I can about the subject and then just rewrite it all from memory, and also give short explanations about tangent characters if need be. Like, and then Arthas went to Dalaran and killed Antonidas, who was Jaina's teacher and leader of the city. In this example, I assume people don't know who Antonidas might be, and give some short examples relating him to known terms, like Jaina or Dalaran. Most people know about both Jaina and Dalaran, so if you're able to relate him to those two things, they'll be like, oh, okay. Point 11, this one is specifically for a top 10. I try to have more than 10 options to choose from, and then narrow it down to the 10 best. You know, the top 10. If topic item covers multiple expansions or classes, I try to diversify the representation. For example, if I'm making a top 10 coolest abilities video, 
I try not to make half the list priest spells, since I play a priest, so I'm biased. Or, if making a top 10 raid bosses video, I try not to make half the list wrath bosses, and instead try to include at least one from every expansion. Point 11 is also another top 10 one. So, also with top 10s, the order of the video is important. Number 1 has to have a good reason for being number 1. Number 10 has to be like a lesser version of some of the items on the list, but also have some of the most interesting things to talk about. Number 10 draws people into the video, so it needs to be good, and it also can't be better than number 1. The other numbers on the list don't really matter as much, and can be just done like any other normal top 10 and ranked accordingly. Alright, now let's go into advice for new creators. Nobody likes their voice. You will get used to it eventually. Every time someone first starts recording audio, the most common complaint you hear is, I don't sound like that. Why does my voice sound all nasally or deep or, you know, too high? Nobody likes the sound of their voice at first. And everyone gets used to it eventually. I don't think I know a single YouTuber who cares about their voice anymore after doing it for like a year. The voice in my head actually changed over time, so now it's like, yeah, that's my voice. That's what I hear now. So that's an interesting thing. I don't think I hear too many people talk about. Advice number two, nobody cares about your ideas. I see a lot of people who are very secretive about what videos they're going to make or their awesome new idea they have for an original screenplay or something. Everybody has their own ideas they want to make, and nobody cares about yours. So don't be super paranoid about trying to, you know, keep them from everyone else. Advice number three. Know what kind of videos you want to make. This kind of sounds like, well, you know, duh, self-explanatory, but I get asked a lot. Like, how do you know what kind of videos you want to make? I was like, why do you want to make videos if you don't even know what kind you want to do? <laughs> That's, you just want to make videos to be a YouTuber just so you can say you make them, I guess? Next point, I'm probably not going to number these like I did the first part. Uh, try to upload at least once a week. YouTube likes consistency, and if you upload too infrequently, there's a big chance that YouTube won't actually recommend your videos unless you get a ton of views every time you upload. Like, I know uh, one YouTuber as a good example. He's a Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTuber called Rank 10 Yu-Gi-Oh! And he uploads like once every like, two or three weeks. It's very infrequent schedule. And every time he uploads, he'll get a ton of views really quickly. Uh, because his videos are really high quality, and YouTube will suggest it to everyone who watches Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. And then there's the person who uploads every day but gets no views on their videos, and YouTube never suggests any other videos. Also not a bad idea just to try to aim for one video a week at first. Just to get started, just to get in the flow of things, and then eventually you'll know if you can increase the amount you can make a week. But the first thing you should aim for is once a week. You know, unless you're going to be like Hurricane and just make a masterpiece that takes six months to work on. In which case, I'll tell you, that is not a sustainable business model. Do that only if you care about this as being a hobby and that's it. Next point. Uh, don't make update videos. Just do it. There's a lot of smaller channels who will make an update video, like, every other week saying things like, hey guys, I'm gonna try to make these new types of videos now. I hope you guys like it. Uh, don't do that. Just do it. And then see how people react to it. That's the best way to introduce a new series, is to just make it. And then see how people react to it, not asking them if they'd like to see it first. Next point, focus on a niche. I hear a lot of advice going to the contrary, like don't focus on a niche. Uh, make a whole wide range of videos and generally if you're first starting out focusing on a niche is the way to go because you can always just branch out later unless your niche is like so specific that you couldn't possibly ever branch out like making I don't know World of Warcraft pet battle channel 
<laughs> you can't branch off from that. That's too niche. That's a niche within a niche. But, you know, starting off with just Warcraft videos or just League of Legends videos, just Yu-Gi-Oh videos, because I have uh, also a successful Yu-Gi-Oh channel. Well, I say successful. It's Successful would mean I make, like, full-time wages off of it. I don't. Uh, it just has, like, over 20,000 subscribers. And it was grown independently from this one. On my spare time, I might add. I just kind of do that one for fun. And it did well because it's only Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. General gaming channels generally don't do well. Unless, you know, you're like a comedy gaming channel where you're putting a whole bunch of effort into one highly edited video a week. Instead of just posting, like, random Let's Plays of a whole bunch of different games that have no rhyme or reason to them. Try to stick to a niche, and you'll see a lot more success earlier on than if you just do whatever you want. Next point, make videos that you'd want to watch. Don't make something just to have something out there. I see a lot of people who will just upload, like, the most randomest thing and then upload it and be like, hey, why not? It's better to have a video up for the week than it is to not have one. It's like, sure it is, but did you really need to record a, you know, your tree outside for four minutes and then post that with no commentary on it? It's like, what, what the hell even is that? Why are you uploading this video to like a gaming channel? That's not something specific to something I've seen in the past. It's just like an example. Uh, make videos that you'd actually want to watch yourself. And don't just make a video to have a video out there. Next point, don't be discouraged when you don't gain attention. This is the number one killer of new channels. Sometimes it just takes a long time before you get noticed. And while YouTube does have a system of the rich get richer, it's not impossible to start off fresh. I remember when I started out back in 2013, I thought it was too late and that there was no way to get noticed under all of the already super popular channels that were out there. And man, was I wrong. <laughs> I was like, there's no way. Uh, but it can still happen. Of course, there are some channels that don't get discouraged and they keep uploading anyway, and they just don't ever learn. Or, like, I know there's this one guy who I followed for a long time. All he posted was Let's Play videos. Uh, he never did any kind of scripted videos, nothing highly de edited. It was just 100% just Let's Plays, and he had over a thousand videos on his channel, and less than a hundred subscribers, and most of his videos had zero views, and he had been doing it for like five years at this point. And I was like, man, at some point, change, try something different. You can't just keep throw doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result you have to be a little bit more experimental when you're trying things out you can't just stubbornly stick to one thing and then hope it works when it hasn't before all right so this next tip is more of just like a technical one to prevent the click or bubble noises keep hydrated while recording and water not soda or juice or tea actual hydration and not just something to drink to wet your mouth. Those noises come from your mouth being dehydrated, which might sound weird as the noises are usually caused by spit, which might make you think, maybe I have too much water in my mouth, but no, that's not the case. Keep a bottle of water next to you while you record and drink from it regularly, in between paragraphs and stuff. I wanted to try to let my mouth get dehydrated while I was making this video, and it kind of is, but it's such a habit to just take a drink from my water bottle every now and then that uh, I'm a little bit properly hydrated at this part, so sadly no clicks or bubbles to kind of give off what I'm talking about. And lastly, there is this YouTube channel called Video Creators, and the channel is dedicated to just giving advice on all things YouTube related. YouTuber related, like how people start up channels, how to make your thumbnails, video length, anything you can think about. And the advice is legit. He knows what he's talking about. And a lot of his things are like, oh, uh, you know, I have done that. And I did see success from doing something similar to that. 
and I also even just try out things whenever he uploads a new video. Usually, like that's my token response when someone asks me how to make videos. I'll just give him a link to that guy's channel. And it seems dismissive, but if you just watched all of his videos, you'd be an expert on how to start out on YouTube. Although watching a whole bunch of videos, you know, doing actual market research before starting a channel, that's too much for most people. I doubt any people who I've recommended the channel to actually checked his stuff out. Alright, so that's it for this. This is like a, a semi-scripted thing, kind of like half things written down, half things being just using talking points. I tried something like this in the past, it did not work out very well, so I never actually released the video. Uh, but I do have it up on Patreon as like a, you know, exclusive. Whenever I make a video and I don't like it, or I don't think it has good enough standards, I'll usually still just like post a version of it to Patreon anyway, to be like, here, here's a terrible video I made that I'm never going to make public, uh, because it doesn't meet my quality of standards. So if you're watching this, that means I thought it was good enough. If not, well then you're probably watching this on Patreon. 